Well, it's God. Right now, I have a topic here. It should not take long. But it stood out to me when I was reading it. And there are those that teach that repentance does not actually have to do with sin. It has to do with a mindset or something. And it's horrendous, the teaching. Okay. There's some that hold to, you know, you believe first and stop sinning later and all these different things. That is, of course, a false gospel, but it also takes out the severity of sin. Until you understand the severity of your sin, you're not going to understand Jesus. And you might say, you know, Jesus paid a heavy price and maybe even tasted the wrath of God. And you say all these things and some of these things are true that you say and some of them are not. But you have not given to them the proper severity. Because you have to understand the father sent his son to bless you, to turn you from your iniquities. So this is one reason the Son of God was sent, by ways of conviction. And as well, the Son of God was set forth and put as the mercy seat in heaven, which is figured to us in the Torah, of course, and for the remission of sins that are past. Okay, so past sins is not anything a lot of people can jive with, of course. We also see that God sent this angel of Yahweh, Jesus, pre incarnate in the Old Testament to destroy. Okay. Now, we understand that Jesus Christ destroys sinners. He does save sinners, but he also destroys them. And it's rendered in part on what the sinner will do when hearing the message. Will they repent of sin? And believe, and I'm going to look at this, how Paul treated this amongst those that were in the church. So if he's treating it like this around believers, the severity must be there. And then, of course, God's timing. If you're filling up the measure of your fathers and your iniquities reach their full, you could be smote dead tonight and be in the torment of Hades. And it will only get worse for you in the future. And you will be punished for eternity. Okay. That's how serious sin is. And there's other things that could be said about how serious sin is. And until sin is looked at the way in which it should be looked at, missing the mark, yes, of course. But it's entirely unnatural. And we're missing the mark of God. Okay. And God doesn't create anyone to sin. So then therefore the mark of God is to be done. And God has pity on those that haven't done it, which happens to be every man, okay, at time and place will sin at least once by choice, and that Jesus can redeem you. But until you're in this redeemed state, which is purified, special people to Jesus, not sinning, this is how severe sin is, okay? 2 Corinthians 12, verse 20, For I fear lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I would, and that I shall be found unto you such as you would not. Lest there be debates, envies, wraths, strifes, backbitings, whisperings, swellings, tumults. And lest, when I come again, my God will humble me among you, and that I shall bewail many which have sinned already, and have not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have committed." So Paul is declaring that repentance is repenting of particular sin. And of course, all sin. Not just, you know, repent of one sin on this list. That's good enough. No, there's got to be a doing away of all of it in the plural. The repentance is repentance of particular sin. Okay. And that Paul would bewail many which have sinned already and have not repented. That's serious. You know, you're not going to have a real, genuine bewailing over someone's sin when you think they're on their way to heaven. Okay? It's just false. It doesn't reach any sort of legitimate charity. As Paul taught that there needs to be soundness in charity. Okay? It's not a real charity. Okay? Okay? You're not actually loving someone by being a fake about it. 
it's being fake. If someone's going to a quote unquote good place, you're not going to cry over them because they did something wrong on their way. Okay. It's not, you're really just crying for yourself maybe, or you have alternative motive, but it's not godly. It's not sound. Okay. But you bewail those that are in this sin because you're going to burn in hell. Okay. And that's what's going to happen to the Corinthians. They're going to burn in a horrible hell. Okay. If they're not going to repent of these sins. And that's just the message of the Bible. I mean, there's the severity of destruction in many parts. In this case, Paul is just a man that begot this church with the gospel. He sees that there's potentially sin, even in the second letter, after having to deal with what he had to deal with in the first letter and dealing with this church that he would have to be to excuse me be well many which have sinned already and have not repented there's not a real mourning with people as i brought up i mean don't act like you're mourning over sin when you think the sinners are saved okay you're just fake you're phony no one actually believes you okay it's a lie Okay, no one rationally just cries over people that are in a good state with God. What's the point of crying? You're crying for yourself. You got something else going on in your sick, perverted mind that you can't even believe the real gospel. Who cares about your tears anyway? Okay, you're grieving over all these ideas that come from your false gospel. I mean, I don't find any sort of reason to give that credence and... It's, to me, just fake, you know? And, but Paul was not fake. And Paul is not a hypocrite. And as you see him go on, I'm going to talk about this in a separate video, but as he goes on into the next chapter, he basically puts out this test. You think of this about us, this is what we want for you. Do you be perfect, okay? So you think this about us, well, don't worry. This is what we wish for you. That you sin? No, that you're going to be perfect. Okay. Paul understood it. Okay. There was tears that he shed over warning the people. And there was a real mourning over sin in Paul's life, but not because these people were on their way to heaven. It's because the people are on their way to hell. And that's what makes sense. That's a soundness and charity. Okay. And all this other... Charity that's out there is false. I mean, there's another gospel. There's false love. And I know we see a lot of it. It's hard to escape it, of course. It seems like it's going to get the masses. Okay. You have to repent a particular sin. Okay. And you have to understand the severity of sin. Okay. That this is all the lengths that God has had to take to get you free of this sin. Okay. And this is his choice to have it as he does. Okay. In heaven. That there's a throne and there's a mercy seat and there's these different teachings. And this is how he places it. Okay. Jesus created by his word. And this is what is before you. That there is a mercy seat, but it's for past sins. There's forgiveness of past sins. So that means you have to repent of particular sins. You have to render them in the past by your action. And then God can justify them judicially. If they're in the current, you're aware of it. You're unsaved. You need to understand you're not going to heaven. And that is something that you bewail. That is something that you cry aloud and spare not. That is something that, you know, you enter into the house of mourning or any of these things. That makes sense. Okay. It does not make any sense that prophets and apostles and men of God would think this way about people. You're going to a great place, man. You might even go home early. You lying devils. You should be damned into hell.